Hey guys, Phil from Trail Talk here, and today we're reviewing the Maxxis Asagai. Bit of a spoiler here, it's good, really good. Why haven't you bought one yet? So let's take a closer look at it. Okay, so before we go into a bit about how it rides, let's talk about some of the specs. So I've been running the Asagai 27.5 in a 2.5 width, and that's in the Max Terra compound with the Exo Plus casing. And I've been running the tire up front for around about two to three months at the moment. So I mounted the tire onto a 30 millimeter internal width rim, and typical Maxxis tubular setup was a breeze, and I'm running around 23 PSI, and that's in the front tire, as I said. And the tire weighs in just above 1,000 grams, so 1,050 grams. And just for reference, the double down weight is about an extra 200 grams. So for that extra protection, you're getting around 200 grams if you go with a double down. So let's take a bit of a closer look at the tread. So compared to a DHR and a DHF, the knobs are a bit taller on the side. And then the center tread, you alternate between something similar to a DHF. So two in the middle, and then they alternate with a section where there's three knobs. So you're alternating between two and three. So the main reason for that, you get a bit more of a transition from the center tread to the outer tread by having that section where there's three individual knobs. So how does all this translate to the trail? Pretty much exactly how you would think. Me personally, I noticed a big transition from the center tread to the edge tread on a DHF, and with the Asagai, you're just not getting that at all. So when you lean over the bike, there's never that vagueness. You've always got grip, which is good to see. I know some people like the feel of a DHF. You could kind of gauge where the grip was and the grip wasn't, but I prefer a more consistent uh, contact patch with the ground. Having the more consistent contact patch as well as the taller side knobs, you do notice a slight increase in rolling resistance, but as a front tire, it wasn't too much of an issue and it rolls pretty smoothly so for most enduro riders I don't think this would be an issue at all and I'd prefer grip over rolling resistance any day of the week. So in Sydney where I ride mostly we've got a lot of sandstone and a lot of loose over hard and I felt that the tire really excelled in these conditions. It cuts through the loose stuff really well and finds the traction under it and then on the rocks there was plenty of grip too so I really like this tire for Sydney conditions. One thing I noticed with tires with taller edge knobs, something like a Magic Mary, they can fold a bit on hard cornering, but I didn't notice this with the Asagai, which is really good to see too. So if you like railing berms, then it's going to be great for you. In regards to riding in wet weather conditions, I've only really had one ride in the wet. We don't get much rain in Sydney at the moment, and it's pretty good. I noticed that it cleared stuff really well. It's pretty similar to a DHF or a DHI in kind of more damp conditions, but when it gets really muddy, I can't really say there, which potentially could be an issue because of that kind of transition knob it could clog up a little bit more but for most riding in Australia I don't think you'd have an issue riding this in wet weather. So in regards to the EXO Plus casing I haven't noticed really too much difference in terms of behavior of the carcass compared to a regular EXO but for the extra 30 to 50 grams over the normal EXO for a little bit more cut resistance I don't think it's too bad but personally next time I'll probably go the double down extra 200 grams on the front you don't notice it too much and that extra support as well as the protection from a double down is probably beneficial. Talk a little bit about the wear. As I said I've been using the tire for around two to three months now and the wear has been really good. I'm actually really surprised. At this point I get a fair bit of undercutting on the edge treads on the inside and I haven't really noticed that that missed this much yet on the Asagai so that's really good to see too. And compared to a DHF, the wear is actually a fair bit more even on the Asagai. So on a DHF, where the channel is, you can actually see that that wears away pretty quickly. So between the edge tread and the center tread, that gap there. So you're usually actually using that part a fair bit. So if there's no tread there, you're missing out on a fair bit of grip that you can actually see because that tread there is wearing a lot. So the Asagai having that little uh, piece of tread in the channel there definitely helps a fair bit in terms of grip as well as wear. And I think this really comes down to that transition knob really distributing the load when you're pushing it through. So as I said, you're getting a lot more grip, consistent grip, so a lot more even, and then getting a fair bit better wear with the Asagai. So I don't see many downsides unless you're a real fanatic for rolling resistance. I think the Asagai is the way to go on these more aggressive bikes. So Jake and Sarah have pretty much been on the Asagai since it was released. So let's head over to them for a more longer term review. The Asagai seems to have a little bit taller of a side knob compared to the DHF, which 
I really like. It seems to kind of hold a line and be able to hold on to off canvas a little bit better. The transition knob, it's kind of like runs in between your set of knobs and your side knobs seem to make it feel a bit more balanced when you're starting to lean it over. It doesn't have that kind of like on off feeling that the minions do. Max Grip Compound, my experience has been really good on the DHF and on the Asagai. It's super tacky, pretty slow rebound. Okay, so something else that I've kind of just seen, I guess. Um, on DHF, you can see where the point of pressure kind of is, just towards the inside of the side knobs. To me, that's just like a bit of a visual of where the acid guy is going to have a little bit of a bigger footprint on the ground, which helps it stay a little bit more stable when you're leaning it over. Um, the force is kind of distributed across the knobs a little bit more evenly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, sweet. And what do you think, Sarah? You've been on them since pretty much they were released as well. Yeah, yeah. So I've um, I've been fortunate fortunate enough to um, have the support of KWT Imports, um, who are the main distributor of Maxis in Australia. Um, and I've been on the Asagai since probably about October last year. And it's been my choice attire since it was released. Um, I still remember the first time I went on them. It gave me the most insane amount of grip I've ever experienced in my life across wet roots, across loam. And what I do really like about the Asagai and its tire profile is the really tall side knobs, um, which really hook into the corners really nicely. It gives me a whole lot of confidence, especially where we ride, which is a lot of sand um, and a lot of loose rocks. So to have that max grip as well, um, Max Grip does only come in a double down and a DH tyre, um, but I run a double down. Um, it gives you a lot of confidence. And then in the, cent in the centre, those centre knobs give you a lot of traction when you're riding. They don't break loose and don't squirm as much as something like a DHF does. I'm very impressed with the performance of this tyre. I'm very impressed um, at its longevity. So I, on average, I ride about four to five times a week on average, um, on a good week. Um, and I generally hold on to an Asagai for about four to five months. Okay. And that's a Max Grip Asagai. So um, very, very impressed. Um, and I was fortunate enough to be one of the first people in Australia to get hold of the Double Down Asagai um, and race it for the EWS in Derby. And yeah, that tire was, that was something else. So there you go, there's the review. As you can tell, we really love the tire and it's definitely staying on all of our bikes. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a like, also subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions about the tire, don't forget to leave them below. Thanks for watching, guys. Mm -hmm.